Hasura is we only had to think about it once and now it stays true whatever connection we have between objects in our database. Right? I have nothing else to do but to pass it this schema and, and Hasura will uh, uh, generate the GraphQL API for this, which is great. And so we're like, hey, it would be super nice if we can use this exact same tool, but for Ferro's Community Edition, right? Uh, except that we didn't have any REST endpoint. Well, uh, Hasura said, hold my beer, and we just rectified <laughs> some endpoints, just configuring Hasura during init and setting up those REST endpoints. Everything else just works. Yeah, great. So yeah, so take me through how Ferris CE is using using Hazur under the hood. It's, it sounds like a really interesting uh, project. So yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I think we're not doing anything crazy with Hasura, but Hasura really, you know, hit the spot. Perfect. Like uh, essentially, we didn't have to think uh, about uh, creating an API um, uh, gateway to the database. Uh, and, and a GraphQL endpoint at that, which was uh, really um, great. So let me um, share my screen. I'm just gonna um, give you a tour here. Hi, so you should see my screen now. This is our GitHub uh, project. Um, and um, I'm going to show you how it looks like. Uh, here I have my Hasura open. I'm just gonna just quickly explain what we're trying to do in 10 minutes in the quick start, um, just for context. So pretty straightforward, you clone, you start. So far, so good. It will create Airbyte, Hasura, Metabase, NA8N uh, for automation. Um, during the quick start, we ask you to just configure a GitHub source. So you just pass your GitHub API token and the repo you want uh, to be synced. And then you can immediately look at metrics in Metabase. Um, it looks like uh, like this, right? Uh, and uh, from the data we pulled, you know, you get BI um, on, on on that data. Pretty neat. But then under the covers, um, what's pretty nice is you actually have the API layer as well. That's where Hasura kicks in. Actually, the ingestion goes through Hasura as well. Um, and just a, an example of something we can easily do with Hasura that we couldn't before. Well, let's just say you want to see uh, all the reviews for all the pull requests. Well, you can now do that pretty easily with GraphQL and that goes through Hasura. So I can just copy paste this, go to my Hasura console. Well, actually I already pasted it and just run it, right? And this is pretty nice, um, obviously, like for exploration in this case. Uh, but you can now use this in conjunction with some other tool, for example, NA8. And you can just, um, uh, NA8 has some um, nodes for uh, to do a GraphQL, um, to do GraphQL queries. And so you can now easily um, automate things, like in this case, in this example, we are automating um, uh, you, every day. You do a GraphQL query that asks, like, hey, how many PRs are currently waiting for review for more than a day? And send that information to Slack somewhere, right? And that goes to the GraphQL API. And so um, Hasura here is really this, um, this API gateway that allows us to easily um, read and write to the database that we have, that we host, to uh, provide these BIs and automation services. So the so the uh, Airbyte is is pu pumping all of your GitHub, you know, raw analytics into is it I guess Postgres in this case. Yes, correct. And then Hazura is sitting on top of that Postgres database. Hasura is sitting on top of that Postgres database. Actually, and I can you're, do... so you're using it to to both be the integrate the layer that Airbyte is is Airbyte communicating with with uh, Hasura to write into the Postgres as well. Then uh, Airbyte only talks to Hasura. I can actually show you the configuration. 
Uh, which which came first? I'm curious because if you to get the data model for the um, the the GitHub like you know repos and things, how uh, did you just model that off of what you were expecting, or how do you how are you storing the data? Yeah, very good question. So. Um, uh, so just by the way, here is like in uh, we have a in our byte you have you know you have sources um, mm -hmm. that pull and and destinations that push data somewhere, and so we created a destination for Ferros, and one of the settings that you pass is where is my Hasura endpoint, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's um, uh, and so Airbyte is not aware of Postgres; it's just aware of Hasura and the GraphQL API. So now, this is a specific plugin then. So the 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 Pharos uh, destination plugin, if you will, for Airbyte is a Hazura integration that allows you to have the API that connects. It's uh, technically, I think it's a GraphQL one, but yeah. Okay. Uh, and how did you define the Hazura URL, Hazura admin secret? Like if I were to, do I need to use like the Pharos flavored version of Airbyte, or how how would I be able to, if I had an existing copy of Airbyte running, how would I be able to connect that up to Pharos today using the uh, the Azure integration? Just like this, you just uh, it's a destination, so you just create you just um, add the destination. Okay. Uh, and you in the Pharos destination, you just configure where your GraphQL endpoint is. That's great. Yeah. And so to your other question, um, uh, our schema, the schema came first. Um, uh, we have, um, uh, we took a lot of effort. Uh, that was in the SaaS version first, right? Um, we took a lot of effort to model the world of engineering operations. Uh, so we define what an artifact is, what a pull request is, what a commit is, how those things relate. And I'm going to, dive into a little bit more detail in a few minutes as to how Hasura um, really helped um, uh, with linked entities and out of order ingestion. But uh, you know, the schema came first. Um, on our SaaS version currently, we have our own you know, version of Hasura uh, that, um, that we had for a while, but I think we're going to soon move to Hasura as well for our SaaS product. Uh, but when we decided to open source, we, we knew that we didn't want to bring our whole thing um, in the open source and just use, um, you know, best of breed of everything. And that's where Hasura came in to provide this GraphQL layer. And so if I look into my, my repo, really, um, Hasura obviously give me a, uh, gives me automatically, this is a great thing, Hasura gives me automatically uh, a GraphQL API based on just this schema, right? I have nothing else to do but to pass it this schema and, and Hasura will uh, uh, generate the GraphQL API for this, which is great. Um, the second thing that it does very well is, um, so our value comes from the fact that we can now properly link, you know, your PR to your tasks, to your issues, right? Or your deployments to your commits. Uh, this is the part that is hard. And that we uh, that is um, that stumps everyone that wants to say uh, create a metric like lead time um, or um, uh, change failure rate, right? Those metrics, which are now becoming industry standards, uh, Dora metrics, if you're familiar with them, <laughs> the problem is they're hard because they span systems, and so. When you think about, hey, okay, I'm going to solve this, one of the problems that you face is out of order ingestion. It's very nice to be able to have those data, but you need to be able to deal with the fact that you may ingest, I don't know, your pull request first, and then the issues that is linked uh, in it, or vice versa. And this is where Hasura helps as well. And the way he does is uh, through upset uh, mutation. Mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, for example, yeah. If you look at our Pharos destination, uh, we changed, of course, we changed the yeah. URL. I need to fix it. Uh, but if you look at the um, uh, uh, Airbyte destination that I was showing before, where you where you set the uh, where you set the um, GraphQL endpoints, 
I uh, just need to find it. Hasra client, yeah, okay. Um, we make uh, use of the on conflict clause. It must be somewhere in there. Uh, I'll find it. But uh, my, my point mm -hmm. is, yeah, it's a writer, sorry, a little note. On conflict clauses. I must have, I need to find. But uh, the point is with the on conflict clause. That allows us to really deal properly with um, out of order ingestion, which in turn allows us to eventually get to the right metrics, regardless of the order of the ETL, which we don't really control. So you're either. more evolving this row of data or or set of data, if you will, uh, as more and more information becomes available. If it doesn't exist, save it as it's needing to be adding more metrics to it or more data to it. Just keep exactly. adding, 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 and that's a really clean API to. Yeah. I love yeah. upserts. Upserts are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and I think like um, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy because I'm not finding it, but uh, <laughs> I, it should be um, but on, it, under, it, on it, underscore conflict, I think. Um, my point is that uh, it's so on very, the underscore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's um, it's really um, Oh, here you go. See, oh, it was in the client. Okay. Uh, my point is, it's short code, right? We automatically add the on conflict clause to almost everything, and it's um, and so we didn't have uh, th this code remains true even if we augment the schema, and we will, right? And I think that's what what was great with Hasura is we only had to think about it once. And now it stays true, whatever connection we have between objects in our database. That's that's really cool. Yeah, and that data model, because that is the that is like that's the Hazura story, right? Because yeah, the Hazura part makes it really easy to connect everything. Um, but getting the data model right, it's like okay, well, the Hazura part's going to be the lowest amount of work here. But getting the data model set up ahead of time is like the part that always takes a uh, a real chunk of time, um, yeah, and it's great, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let me actually uh, show you. Um, so, <clears throat> the um, the the thing that so only the only thing we had to do really is to uh, define those things. But then everything you see in here was automatically handled, right? All the relationships um, and uh, how that translates into um, what you see here, automatically done, and we had nothing else to do. And now people can build on top of it, right? We 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 did the automation example, like uh, there was, you know, it was purely a matter of um, doing the automation in the automation tool. In this case, N8N. Um, there was nothing else we had to do in the GraphQL endpoint because Hasura had done all the heavy lifting. That is so cool. It's, I mean, I can see really how powerful this uh, this combination is because that's a really sweet stack. You know, you've got the, the built-in charting and, and everything else in Metabase, which is, I really mm -hmm. like that tool, it's a great tool. Uh, yeah, you've got the, database. you know, the Zapier, open source Zapier, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you've got, you know, Hazura connecting connecting the pieces in the middle, and Airbyte obviously being the uh, the, the pipe from uh, from GitHub, because yep. um, you could add any other any other tool you want into that Airbyte system, and as yeah, long yeah, as we, you have we, a data yeah. model supporting, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and by the way, we have an extensive list. Uh, let me just show you. Uh, we already support all of those. So GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, Jira, Jenkins, Harness, like. Major duty, Victor, up, status page, like anything that has to do with um, CICD incidents, version control, or tasks. Right. If a user, if a user wanted to bring in, like a community member wanted to bring in a new source and be able to support it, what would it, what would it uh, take to actually create a supporting data model and or API connector to do that? Yeah, so there's several scenarios based on whether or not there's the schema already supports it. If you if you if you let's say you bring another um, uh, data source, but for models that already exists, right? So let's say there's a GitHub two product out there now. Mm -hmm. 
Um, pretty straightforward. You just create a new source in Arbyte, which you know extracts the data. This has nothing to do with. I mean, it's a self-contained problem. Then you augment the Faro's destination to just map it correctly to the schema, right? We have those things called converters um, that just you know take what you extract and and map it to um, our canonical model, and that's pretty much it. Everything else works. Um, if you need to augment the schema, then you just you know augment the schema and do the same. Um, you can even do that in Hasura, by the way. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do the, the the SQL thing with flyweight. You can just add a field or add a table or add a foreign reference in Hasura. You see my screen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. And and then you you do the same, right? Which is uh, pretty nice. Um, we are thinking about also we haven't documented yet, but Hasura also allows you to do pretty cool things with actions and events. Mm. Right, possibly to do some kind of transforms or an error enrichment. Um, that's also very nice. Um, our point is really that uh, we are um, composing software in a way that we think uh, is going to make you um, uh, efficient and, and make time to value um, uh, fast, given the complexity of what you're trying to do. And so, um, yeah. Well, by the way, I forgot about another thing we're using Hasura for. So we had, um, we have, um, just to show you how great uh, it is, uh, we have a way to send CI CD events, right? This is a tool we also have on our SaaS platform. And, you know, if you're, if you're using homegrown tools to deploy your software, your applications, um, and we don't have a connectors for it, you have a way to push um, uh, build or deployment events to Pharos, which is nice. It's a, it's a REST-based, uh, essentially, um, API. And so we're like, hey, it would be super nice if we can use this exact same tool, but for Pharos Community Edition, right? Uh, except that we didn't have any REST endpoint. Well, uh, Hasura said, hold my beer, and we just rectified <laughs> some endpoints. And so if you take a look in our code base, um, in the in it, when we start Hasura for the first time, uh, we simply create a whole bunch, uh, oh, it's in the resources. Um, we simply create a whole bunch of um, restified endpoints. Um, so that now um, we can use the exact same REST-based tool to write into our underlying database. That is so cool. And that's like, that is like the perfect case, right? Because there was a, a system that didn't support GraphQL yet. Yeah. And so it's like, well, you can, you can do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, that's a really, I mean, that's a really clean stack uh, of services. Yeah, right. You know, and it's part of a part of an ethos that we really, you know, uh, value at Hazura is is tools that, for lack of better terms, stay in their lane but own their lane, yeah. <laughs> like tools that are, are focusing on this part of the problem set, right? And so saying, yeah. okay, you know, this tool's focusing on the data connector ETL pipeline. This tool's yeah. can focusing on triggers and connecting to services like an A N. Um, or metabase like charting and, and everything else, and then you know, Sarah's like, yeah, and then we're the API, and and it's uh, yeah, yeah, that's really cool. That's a that's a great that's a great feature stack. And you built this, right? You, this was the piece that you you put together, or you uh, made me, the CE me, edition, or what? Uh, so, sorry, when you say me, you see me personally or my team? You, you personally or your team? Uh, my, my my team did it. Um, your team, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, great people, way smarter than I am. Um, oh man, you know, that's yeah. I, mean, I was going to say this is like standing standing in the in the presence of giants when it comes to this kind of architecture. Yes. It's uh, it's that's a very cleanly thought through system. How how big was your team that actually pulled this off? Uh, very small. Like the, there were three of us. Um, I, I still commit a lot, but I, I mostly deal with documentation and a little bit of architecture. But we were three of us. Uh, I think. But remember that. We spun that off from our SaaS version, so the schema was already there, and so the only thing we had to do is really plug everything together, 
um, uh, essentially you can think about it as the, um, the next gen essentially set of tools that we're going to use in SaaS. So we, we are finishing to integrate with Airbyte right now. Hasura is next to replace our old internal version of Hasura, if you will, that we built ourselves. Um, and um, yeah, Metabase is already in the product. So for us, it was really just composing software. And so if you think about it, um, right now we are working on, on, we have a great local experience with Docker Compose. Um, it starts all the systems, launch the init script that ties it together. But now we are uh, about to finish our recommendation for how to do put that in production. And so we are going to recommend to use Plural.sh. I don't know if you're familiar with them, uh, but it's like one-click deployments for Airbyte, Metabase, Asura. And so what's, what's it called? Plural, like um, singular plural, Plural.sh. Okay. They do a heavy lift of having good um, Terraform and Helm chart uh, defaults for those services. So you give them the keys of your AWS or Cloud Kingdom and they do the rest. And so the main idea is, hey, um, go on Pro or you know whatever, but like Pro works well. Start Airbyte, start Hasura, start uh, Metabase, make sure that they can network and then you know, this init script will just go there and pre-configure some things in Airbytes, point Hasura to the right database, uh, uh, create those restified endpoints, um, and uh, Metabase will point to the same database, and voila, right? That's the, uh, that the magic. For us, really, the value that we add is the schema and the composition of that software. But yeah, yeah, and that's and that is, I mean, the the architecture is the value, and this is where it really comes down to. Again, this is what Hazura is trying to solve. This is what other tools are trying to solve. Like you have the product vision, you have the schema vision, you have the the like your business value is in terms of like how it all comes together, yep. and maintaining your own resolvers as API endpoints is not actually part of your core business, or like. It's not something that you maybe want to have be part of your core business. So you're like, we, we want to build a product, not yes. build a backend or, or, or whatever. <laughs> and uh, that's the value that there is. Like you can say, yeah, we have the architecture, we have the schema, and we have the know-how to put it together and can help you do the same. And there's like, that's a business. Yeah. And just, uh, just to give you a, a couple of, um, uh, so for, two, two things, sorry. Um, one is, um, Customers now, both uh, both customers of the SaaS and people playing around with Fair C, they're starting to realize that they can do some pretty cool stuff that was difficult before. So it's more like GraphQL thing, but like just to give you an idea, now it becomes possible for engineering um, uh, leader or senior uh, ICs to start asking questions like, "Hey, can you tell me um, all the um, PRs that may be responsible for this incident?" And now it's possible because you know you have this uh, layer of connected data uh, from your different engineering systems, right? So you're exposing because I'm I'm very loosely familiar yeah. with uh, GitHub API. <laughs> yeah. So you're telling me that you're able to look at all the PRs plus all the files that actually got touched uh, with that PR. Uh, no, 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 it's it's more than this. So if you ingest um, your incident data from your incident system, say, yeah. uh, if you um, ingest data from your CI, CD system, say, Circle CI, and your data from uh, GitHub or whatever, your version control, assuming that data links correctly and, you know, based on all the work we've done to support out of order ingestion eventually as it should yeah. <laughs> then you can start asking questions that today requires a human and a screen and those questions could be like hey like uh, given that there is a path from the pr all the way to the incidents can you tell me like which because for example the incidents applies to a service right this service was deployed between two deployments we you know what is the change sets um that that made it to the deployment and then you know which prs are possibly responsible right so now with graphql you can potentially get answers 
uh, to that question, like, hey, what are the potential culprits, right? And That's this is cool. this, with zero intelligence, right? This is just the data that links. Now, yeah. on top of that, you can do more. You can like uh, start, yeah, you can start looking at the path and you can do more stuff and, you know, everything is extensible, but like even with zero intelligence, you can still start getting answers to questions that today, what you need to do is a human do that, do that journey. Um, That's and, really cool. How, how are you expo exposing the query interface? Are you exposing it as raw GraphQL? Are you, is that part of the Pharos interface is some kind of a, a, you know, introspection query language or how, how would a manager go in there to ask that question? So today, so the, the two sets of answers, one is, um, for SaaS, we uh, use a tool called GraphiQL um, mm -hmm. that allow people to do uh, similar to you know yours here. Um, it's, it's graphical, yeah. We have graphical. graphical. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I even yeah, GraphiQL. It's fine. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I call it graphical, but that that might be wrong. So <laughs> I I, uh, I don't know. And so um, um, uh, what Graph Pickle has is also a JSON data, which is pretty nice. So people can actually do some data wrangling in that UI and, and get some set of results. Um, uh, and we also have a, a pure endpoint for this in case they want to plug other um, other tools uh, to talk to a database. For Ferro CE uh, Community Edition, it's uh, just the Hasura UI, which I think is you know, already great. Um, um, and for now, that's that's what we have. And there's another thing I wanted to react to, and I think um, uh, we have a very similar philosophy than Hasura when it comes to, you know, um, what we want to do is convince uh, our users and customers that they should focus on differentiated work, not undifferentiated work. So for most of them, uh, modeling what a PR is, uh, what uh, an artifact is, dealing with ingestion of that data and uh, visualization, it's undifferentiated work. Yeah. yeah. Even even simpler things uh, like, hey, like what what is a good dashboard, right? Uh, for for visualizing your data, like a dashboard like this, right? Or if you um, take a look at um, our Dora dashboard, it's empty right now, but uh, the um, point is coming up with what those queries should be, that's a non-trivial amount of time and effort, right? And so <laughs> the, the point here is, you know, uh, leverage, leverage folks that have spent time uh, and um, for which it is the core business. And that's um, us and the same way, and, and then it, to us recursively as well. We, we're not here, we're not in the GraphQL business. Uh, mm -hmm. The people do that very well. And so, you know, we try to compose uh, best of breed here. And that's why we're using Asura. That is really cool. And I, and I love that being an open source product behind it, it allows um, this, this suite of open source tools to be able to work together. Because obviously, you know, people could go towards hosted versions of any one of these. If you go to yep. a hosted version of Ferro, you go to a hosted version yep. of Azura and, and get the benefits of, you know, your plural is great for, for running things, I guess, and, and, and render and, and digital ocean or whatever else. Um, but there's a path to saying, actually, I'd rather go even more low ops than even having to maintain my deployment platforms. We'll just go with the cloud versions and still get the benefits of, of everybody working together and having these these cloud projects in the back end. So um, yeah. I like that path for customers to be able to say, no, we're small and scrappy or whatever. So we need to have access or or we have, you know, we're both in Europe. Uh, we have uh, Europe, we have requirements that we can deploy on US servers. And so we're just going to put everything in, in house and then be able to level up slowly over time, which servers you actually can deploy on or want to deploy on. I'm guessing Pharos has the GDPR game pretty well. Yeah. Pretty well covered. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, in the sense that everything is stored in the US. So pretty oh, within the US, okay. <laughs> yeah. So we're compliant. Um, but I would say um yeah, exactly. And I think uh, you know, we have customers that said, hey, you know, uh, 
metabase is nice, but let me like ETL the data into, I don't know, Redshift or whatever. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. Um, that works. That works too. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's really cool. I'm curious. Did you test any other? Because you said you had a built uh, homemade solution for the Azure layer. Did you uh, look at any other tools to try to compare or or test anything else out, or or how did you come across Azure to to uh, use it? Um, that's a good question. Uh, how did we come across Azure? I think so. Um, I'm missing some context here, um, but I think our CTO had Hasura on his radar for a while. Um, and uh, you know the, how those things go, uh, doing massive migrations like this, uh, it's, not, it, it's, it's not something you start on a Friday afternoon, so it needs to be planned. Um, but essentially the way we came across it is because it has almost the exact same um, feature set as the things that we built. And uh, that's a good sign that we should probably not main, maintain ours and switch um, to uh, uh, okay. put our effort and energy elsewhere. Um, and when it when when we decided to open source um, Ferros, here's an open source version. Um, you know, we said, okay, well, uh, you know, we had Asura Asura lined up. Uh, let's just try. And uh, it took us four weeks to create an open source version from our paid product. Um, and I, I, again, that, well, a testament also to um, the quality of our engineers, but also I think to the quality of the tool that we were composing together. Um, the, like the schema I showed you, that's our internal, the, the schema we use or part of the schema we use in our paid product as well. And then we just plug Hasura on top of it and that's it. Like if you look, if you look at the code base, there's not a lot of Hasura things in our code base. And again, a good thing. Um, the only thing that we're doing really is um, just configuring Hasura during init and setting up those REST endpoints. Everything else just works. I, I like hearing that. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, like it, it's... Um, I think that that's uh, that's why I was saying at the beginning that I don't think we're doing anything um, crazy, right? I think we're pretty center of target in terms of use case, and for that center of target, Hasura was just smooth sailing. Yeah. We're uh, so obviously the REST endpoints are bringing a lot of value. Also, the auto-generated GraphQL endpoints. Are there any other features that you've been able to leverage or or we're leveraging that are helpful or for now, that's it. I think um, as time goes by, some other possible things that we'll be looking at are, um, or to be to be fair, I think even the users may directly look at it, um, actions and events and remote schemas. Um, I think those are things that uh, actually I, I even wrote a guide here. I, I wrote a quick um, intro to Hasura for our users and what it does. Uh, yeah, we actually have documented that you can inject custom logic through the Actions tab. Uh, you can do API stitching. You can, um, yeah, do events uh, for webhooks, essentially. So all of those are um, right now essentially put uh, brought to the attention of the Ferrocy users to help them extend the product. Um, I don't, right now I have nothing on the roadmap that may, m makes it leverage more things in Hasura by default. But I think the value here is more like, hey, you as a user of Ferrocy, you have all those tools at your disposal to really um, uh, tailor Ferrocy to your needs. So op open sourcing, you know, a a paid SaaS product in four weeks is quite the undertaking. <laughs> and it's a, it's a really, I, I hope that's at access of inspiration for other people too, to, to see that. Cause I mean, as, as companies that have paid and open source projects, like there's something that's very rewarding about being able to give access to these tools and be able to benefit from the, 
the multiple eyes in the community, like where you're not just getting, and Hazira has got a lot of open source products and, and it's a uh, tool chain as well. Like you're not just getting all the benefits of your, of the Ferros community. You're getting the benefits of the Airbyte community. You're getting benefits of the Hazura community. You're getting the benefits of all these different communities that are, are pouring into stabilizing core yes. services of your business. Yes. And I think that's, uh, that's really cool. Yeah, this was deliberate too. I mean, uh, sorry, yeah, for, for sure. Like for us using best of breeds, obviously from an engineering standpoint, it was great, but also, yes, um, we also think that um, what we're building is of great interest to the people in those various communities, whether it's Airbyte, Metabase or um, Hasura or NA8, uh, because they surely have felt some of you know the pain of what we're trying to, to solve here think what you really need uh, as an, so let me put it this way engineers when they build an application they put a lot of love uh, love and, cra and and craft into it and they instrument it uh, with datadog with new relic with sumo right and so they have this observability layer but they don't have this observability layer for their engineering operations usually right they don't treat their own operations with the same care then they treat their applications. And that's what we're trying to solve because um, we think it can help them tremendously be more productive, right? So essentially think of Ferros and Ferros C as the data dog for engineering operations. It's a nice way to put it, yeah. To, it's, so that's what we tell ICs, what we tell VPs is like, where's the sales force for engineering? So see, see the two different. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the Uber for X argument is always is always a good one. <laughs> I think nice. like yeah, that vision. At the end of the day, you know, today like a new VP of sales comes in in a small startup, they don't have Salesforce. He will bring Salesforce. There's no question. There is, is there is no like ROI computations. Like, well, we just need this to do business. And and I think at the end of the day, we would like to be that, but for engineering operations. Like, yeah, let's just bring Ferros because you know. We need to understand what's happening in, in engineering. Yeah. Well, right. I don't have any more questions for you. Do you have any questions for me? Um, yeah, cool. Um, no, again, uh, you know, just super excited to show to show off what we've done with Asura. It's uh, smooth sailing. That's great. <laughs> I love hearing that. All right. Wow. Well, then uh, we'll stay in touch. Have a nice rest of your day. Uh, I guess you got a whole one in front of you. <laughs> Yeah. Right.